The Lockheed P-38 Lightning was the first American fighter to fly faster than 400 miles per hour in level flight. Test flights of the YP-38, the prototype vehicle for the production P-38, revealed problems initially thought to be tail flutter. During high-speed dives approaching the speed of sound, the aircraft would shake violently and the nose would tuck under, negating elevator or rudder input. Flutter was ruled out as the P-38's tail was skinned with aluminum, making it structurally rigid. After extensive wind tunnel tests were completed, it was revealed the instability was due to compression. At transonic speeds, air compresses, forming shock waves that behave very differently than air moving at slower speeds. The P-38's center of pressure, where the forces of lift and drag are exerted, actually moved back toward the tail when flying transonic. The solution was to install dive flaps that actually changed the geometry of the wing, keeping it effective in a transonic dive. There was a gentleman here at the labs named Ezra Kotcher who had this great idea that we needed a research airplane to test the transonic regime as well as going supersonic. On the other end of the spectrum, the NACA or the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, which was charged with exploring um, kind of the basic science behind flight, um, had, had a similar idea. So the two organizations got together and decided we're going to create a research airplane. They called it the X-1 and that was really the beginning of the research airplane program. So we were looking at contractors who could build an experimental plane, but all of the traditional ones were busy cranking out airplanes by the thousands for World War II. Well, Be Bell Aircraft out of New York wasn't quite as busy, but um, Larry Bell, who headed the, the company, agreed that he could do this experimental plane. So between them and the Air Force and the NACA, they, they designed the, the X-1. Since the 50 caliber bullet was known to be stable at supersonic speeds, the body of the X-1 was designed to follow its basic shape. The combination of the stable body shape, thin wings, powerful engine, and an all-moving tail allowed Air Force test pilot Chuck Yeager to be the first person to fly faster than the speed of sound. Yeager's supersonic flight was the most famous. However, the X-1 family of rocket planes and the research techniques employed by the Air Force became the pattern for all subsequent X-Craft programs. The flight data collected by the Air Force and NACA over the X-1's 238 flights proved invaluable to U.S. fighter designs throughout the rest of the century. The X-1E reached a top speed of Mach 2.24, but its straight wing and structural material limited it from achieving higher speeds. The X-2 delivered valuable research data on high-speed aerodynamics and thermal effects. The first X-2 was destroyed on a captive flight, checking the craft's liquid oxygen system. The plane was jettisoned and fell into Lake Ontario, never to be recovered. The last flight in the program saw the second X-2 become the first manned aircraft to fly faster than three times the speed of sound. Unfortunately, the aircraft became unstable when its pilot, Mel Apt, attempted a banking turn at speed. Apt ejected, but never exited the ejection capsule to use his personal parachute. He fell for several minutes and was killed. The X-2 program was stopped at just 20 flights. NACA never had the chance to even commence detailed flight research with the aircraft. The search for answers to high mock flight questions had to be postponed for two years until the arrival of the most advanced of all X-planes.